Hi there, so I thought I'd open up this iron actually because it's had its day. As you can see there's quite a few marks on the underside of it here. These are kind of like almost scratch marks, I'm not quite sure where they've come from really. It's almost like I use it on uh, sandpaper, doesn't it? But um, yeah, they've got a bit rough and most importantly that it's beginning to scale up inside even though I use uh, filtered water. So I thought I'd open this one up and have a look inside. So it's a Morphe Richards Comfy Grip and um, where's the model number? Oh, there we go. So it's a uh, 300007. Nothing particularly special. Just does steam and it's got the spray as well. So uh, let's open it up and have a look inside. So at the back here as you can see it's got these security screw bits, but I've got the screwdriver to use those, so what we'll do is we'll open it up and give this a blast. So I've already started to make sure this one fits, which it does. Right. That should now pop off, oh yeah, there we go. Uh -huh. There we go, so it just pops off, slides back, and here we can see the electrical supply coming in. So, yeah, it's quite nicely designed. So, you've got your kind of ball joint affair here, which takes a lot of the stress off the cable. So, you can see that moving about here, and then everything obviously coming into here. And what have we got? We've just basically got regular cross head screws. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, for you to remove. And hoping then, I guess, we're going to have to somehow remove this plastic piece at the top. And it should give us some more screws at the front here. There are these screws again. Let's about see those. And this is the screwdriver I used. So, as you can see, it just slots into there. Then you can turn, so fairly easy. Right, let's resume with the removing of Phillips screws and see how far we get. Flex right out of the way as well. It's just going to get in our way, isn't it? Okay. Flat head. Be right back. This will be sent to. Um, we recycling so it won't just be chucked into the garbage it will be recycled properly right that's that out of the way let's continue with some more screws now because they're off but it's still pretty tight So as you can see, these ones just under here are going to be interesting because they're kind of in the way. Yeah, that uh, board joint thing is in the way really, so I might have to have a little bit of a fiddle about with that. It might pop off. Ah. Okay, so this comes off. Does that come away somehow? There's a screw under there, that's interesting. So let's just get these off first, so at least I can move that out of the way now. This makes it a little bit easier. 
it's done me pretty well this one. I mean, I don't use it a lot, but it's had quite a few years worth of shirt ironing. Now, what's next? Because that seems to have a screw in here somewhere. Nothing in the filler nozzle. So I might have to have a little bit of a play. I'll be back. Well, it's not given any secrets away so far, so I'll just push this bit to the side. We'll get a Phillips in there, at least get this bit off. So there's that handle, soft grip handle. Nothing too interesting about that. So we're left with this bit here, which we've got flapping in the breeze. Um, so this, ah, this comes off. Now that's interesting. There's a screw rattling in here. It may have been my force. There was a screw that just came down here and that went into the lower of the two bits. Although I've been a little bit hard on it, so I guess that may have just popped out of the threads. So here's your button assembly. So can you free the screw up? Yeah, there we go. Nothing too interesting. Just a uh, cross thread, cross head rather. And it's on the floor. So that went into the second hole. When that is out, how do you get that out then? I think you might have to pop the buttons out to get to that, you know? I mean, these things aren't designed to be opened. So they're not designed to be serviced, so I guess once you push the buttons in that's then hiding that screw going into there, but it, I mean, it came out easy enough, so yeah, and that's obviously a filling hole. Okay, so here's the gasket for the filling hole, and put your two buttons, and there they, ah, that's interesting, so they, they squirt down these pipes. So they squirt the water down these pipes to wherever they're supposed to go, where it's supposed to go. And here's your adjustment for the amount of steam. So that's interesting. Be interesting to see what that's doing. It must be opening a valve somewhere. So when you fill it up, it doesn't go straight in and down. There's a bit of a glass plate there. I say glass is plastic, isn't it? Yeah, it's plastic plate which must distribute the water. Anyway, we've got some more screws now, so this is good. We'll get one in there, and then two there. Let's get them out. How exciting. Ah, main cover comes away. So now you can see, I'll turn it around this way. So this button here, Whenever you press that, it must pull the water up from the reservoir through this pipe and then out of the nozzle. Very similar to a water pistol. Nothing more complex than that. There's our three screws. So that could just pop off. What have we got now? Screw at the front. This is how it looks. There's your screw in the middle. This one for the steam coming through the bottom, the base plate, that just seems to send water down somewhere, which is interesting. So I always thought the water would just sit in here and then if you press the button it would push. I don't know, I don't know what I thought actually. It'd be interesting to see what's inside. Get this one off. This one's actually got a, uh, a washer inside. So maybe a bit more integral to the design. So there we go. There's the washer that came with it. 
pick that one off the floor as well before I step on that. Now, what are we doing now? So, let's take the small ones off here because these might be doing something. They're too tiny really to hold it together. But there might be, is there anything else underneath? So, oh look, so there we go. So it looks like you've got different levels. So that just went all the way down inside. So I guess when you adjust this, so I pull that out. Uh -huh. How peculiar. So that seems to have two washers in place. So they must open up two different levels maybe. Okay, high, medium and low. Can you see anything inside? I'll get that camera to show you inside. It just went straight down there like that. Hmm. Odd. And with this off, unfortunately that doesn't reveal anything else. Ah, there's the mechanism. So, that's just like a little pump that is. It's quite cool. Just a little plunger pump. Neat. Same as this one, I guess. Oh, there's inside, look. Got your spring. It's got a washer on the outside. And that's it, kind of does that. So, let's take this off. Not gonna be reusing any of this. Not gonna be reusing any, so let's just get rid of that. It is, okay. There's the light to tell you when it's heating. So obviously your mains go in and go straight underneath to the element and then you must have a bit of a connection there just to um, switch the light on when there's a, a heating element being switched on. That's kind of cool. Nothing fancy, just a like, uh, little neon type bulb thing really. And a little glass cover. But we still need to get into the main gubbings, don't we? So I'm thinking now we need to get this pink piece off, I think, possibly through the button. So I'm gonna have a go at that, because I can, th I think I can see possibly a mounting point there on this side. And there's definitely one in there, just inside there. So that's gonna be fun. So I think it's next, possibly somehow this pink piece needs to come off. Let's see if the button will just prise off. Almost, without stabbing myself. Driver. Ah, there we go, so that just comes off. That's your little clicky thing that just gives you that kind of tactile feedback. And then what you're doing is you're turning the element, um, some sort of rheostat type thing, I guess. As you turn that, you're turning the element, so as you can see, with the Cross head in there. Let's get that one out. Ooh, this comes away. Good. Nothing under there. And indeed, sadly, nothing under here. So I've still got loads of pink plastic. Keen um, to get that out. Yeah, good. Thank you. There's the other pump. And you can see there's kind of washers and seals down in there to make it watertight but 
nothing. It just, oh, look at that. It comes away. So there we go. So here's the water tank. So it's all sealed underneath here, apart from this bit, which must be the pickup, I guess. You can see there's the top bit. Put the water in there, which fills this. We'll get this off in a second. And so yeah, this is the pickup, and then whenever you jet water down to the element, it's pushing it down here. Have a look of it. Because that pipe just Oh no, of course the pipe actually sends it underneath the element, I guess, somehow. Let's have a look, but yeah, so there's the tank. Just fits into there, so that's weird. Uh, I suppose, yeah, it's sending the water down there in metered doses, which you've done with your funny pipe thing. So that doses the steam, yep, so that fires it down the hole in metered doses, which then obviously gets turned into steam and then it comes with the holes. This bit was to inject extra steam. So this is the bit that um, sends water down the pipe when you press the boost, if you like. There's your little view stat. You can hear that. All the wires going in here. Um, yeah, I mean it's not watertight. The grommet there, that's about it. So now you can see we've got our three screws. So there we go, there's the one, two, three. So that's, yeah, water tank, rear stats, let's get these out. So definitely more complex than I thought it would be. I thought it was just fairly crude, it was just, well I suppose it is just dripping water onto the element effectively, but with all the pump and that there's, there's definitely something going on there, isn't there? There's, technology behind the scenes. These had washers as well, going into the base plate. We're nearly there. Suspense, suspense. Okay, here we go. Da -da. Oh, not much to see. So this bit, um, oh there's our, this is, this is our boost, basically just down into a watertight grommet hole which sits on there, that fires the water down when you want extra steam, so that obviously goes into this base plate which I think is going to be sealed actually, there's not much to see in here which is a pain, might better scrape that out. But. So that's water going in there, and then obviously the plunger thing. This controls how much steam drips from the tank through the hole down into the main base plate. Here you can see our. See that? So that's our rear stat switch for. Temperature, maximum, minimum. So they're quite a funky piece, isn't it? Look at that. I just turn that one for you to see. And this thing here is what did that funny clicking noise. So when the iron came up to temperature, it would click. So I don't quite know what that does, but I know when you turn it on, it would click when it was up to temperature and it was ready. So is that some sort of a, I'm not quite sure what that did. Don't know. Take it off. Let's see what this does. Cool. 
stiff screw. Yeah. Kind of a coppery colour. Not sealed. Somewhere may have been in the past, I guess. There's some sort of paste on there. Though. I think this used to click. So. Ah, hang on. That. We know what this does, don't we? We know what that does. So. When the element was on and that got hot, this used to um, bend. And that piece was like that, of course, remember. And underneath there's this here, which is a, a valve, a switch, to allow the water to start. So until that gets to temperature and then curls upwards, it's in the off position. But as soon as that gets hot, it curls up and you hear the clicking noise, which is what it is. This little tab here, effectively, presses on that to open the valve to allow water to start to flow. So that's what that is. Very cool actually, didn't think about that being needed, but that is, yeah, very good. So, normally it's like that, probably just barely touching. When it's hot, it, I mean, I can't do it because it's, it's kind of that material that you need to either heat up to do it or bend it permanently, but it would press against that to open this little valve. In fact, if we open it, there we go, look. So as soon as you open that, it allows water to drip into here, down the hole. And then that water would start to feed into there, which is obviously baking hot which then turns into steam, which allows it to come through the holes. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Um, this is probably some temperature sensor, so it knows when to switch the element off. Uh, well, it might, it might just be done via all the heat here, so when it gets to a certain temperature, I just presses it off because that's all done under tension, all those bits of metal. Um, so there we are. Now, I don't think I can go any further, sadly, because this is, this is sealed, as you'd expect, so the water should only ever be inside here. It's never going to be on this bit, of course. It's only ever, ever going to be in the hole or down your boost. Um, so this is always dry. As you can see, it's completely sealed. And the water must flow into this cavity because it, it's definitely kind of a bit of a, a cavity in there and the water drips through the holes. I mean, as you can see, it doesn't seem to be very even because some of the holes are crusty and some are completely clean down the back here. So almost like they've never had water on them. Uh, but that's your boost. So when you send water down there to give you a boost of steam. It only ever came out of here, which was interesting. I thought it, would, it came out of here, but it didn't. It only used to come out of here, so. Um, so I think that's about it. I think that's about it. So, yeah. This is a very nice hard plastic. Let's pull that out. Hmm. Yeah, neat. Let's just take this off. See how this is made. Because it is a tear down, isn't it? Long screw. You see that? Yeah. One of those little old fashioned rotary switches, quite old technology actually. Uh, some sort of connection here. And then when electricity is allowed to flow up through here, I don't know if you can see that, you can just about see the contacts closing to allow electric to flow. Neat, 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 very cool. 
Hmm. Well, there we are. That's about it, really. So that, that cavity held that. And let's take this off as well. Look. Some sort of a could be a fuse, I guess, as well to cut power if it gets too hot. Thermal fuse, I guess, so it knows when when to fully cut off. annoying. The classic chocolate block. So you can't see what I'm doing there can you? Apologies for that. Apologies for the uh, noise of the focusing as well. I'm trying a uh, different lens. It's the Canon 17 to 55. You know, that's supposed to be that really amazing one that you can buy. But to be honest, I think it's a bit naff of video. It's all right for, for just shooting these pictures, but for video, yeah, rubbish. It's quite an old design, I guess. So it's, um, I mean, it's an ultrasonic motor, but it's not the new STM, so it is, it's noisy. What are we looking at? Oh yeah, here we go. Thermal fuse, thermal kind of. Can I read what's on there? Keep forgetting this is not a macro lens as well, so. Can't read that. Can't read that for the life of me. Need a magnifying glass. I'm back. Ah, oh, I see, it's um, 240 degrees C? Or is that 1000? No, it can't be 1000, can it? It's 240 degrees C. It's um, an ET in front of it. So, that's how hot it gets, I guess. Maximum temperature. Yeah, that's all the bit on there. Groovy. So there we go, and you, can, and you can see a lot of the white gubbins coming out of here. There's quite a lot of a, a mess in this. So it is, it's past its used by date, so. Now there's the terminals going in, look, can you see? So inside here, there must be a huge heating element. It just heats up. And you can just about see in there. I don't know if you can or not. But in there, there's kind of like a, it's a bumpy surface in there to probably spread the water evenly. Um, so, yeah, I mean, to open this up, I'd have to sort of really carve it. I don't think it's going to let me with everyday tools. It's probably well designed, but in there, just be a plate, I guess, and an element. And actually, a lot. One Morphe Richards Comfrey Grip. Steam iron tear down. Oh, we haven't done this. Haven't done this. Let's just get the tank off. Cool. I was almost going to finish the video there without doing the tank. That would have been a nightmare. Because I would have been annoyed at that. Well, there's clips. There. And there, but are they coming off? No, they are not. So I'm gonna have to have a little bit of a look. Still fighting this thing. Um, yeah, so I know a lot of people probably thought, what a waste uh, of an iron, but um, it started to spit loads of white lime scale onto everything I ironed. It was a nightmare. I was just spitting it constantly. So I thought I would um, give it a clean using some descaler. I used an actual descaler, so not like a chemical one, just to sort of, you know, try and help be good to the environment. And um, I, it just made it worse. 
Um, rather than just white coming out now, I've got like a greeny colour coming out. So uh, it's not one that you can use anymore, unfortunately. Because as soon as you try and iron something, it just covers it in green slime. Now, I'm intrigued about this thing in here. There's like a cloth type thing. And I don't know if that's part of the like anti lime scale thing. Because on the back it's got um, it's got anti calc on it, but I don't know what that means. As you can see, this is hardcore to get into this. So I have to do a bit more off camera. So excuse me while I have a, a break. Wow, that was ridiculous. I had to um, use a hammer in the end. There was just no way that was coming off easily, as you can see in the middle there. It was sealed all the way around. I guess it's got to be watertight, hey? Uh, nothing on the bottom. There's your pickup pipe. And it does indeed have a little filter in the bottom there, look. So there we go, got a little filter in there. Just basically a sponge gauze. Now the interesting bit was this here, look. What is that? This must be the anti calc I guess. It's a little tray that was just sat in there. It was loose, it was just rolling about. What on earth is that? It's like little um it's like a silica gel pad. Eee. No odour. I'll obviously be washing my hands straight after this, but it's you can see the colour of it. How peculiar. So this must um, soften the water, I guess, prevent limescale build-up. Didn't work very well, sadly, because after a little while it kind of started to... Uh, started to you know, produce limescale at the bottom, even though I was using you know, mineral water. Um, Brita filtered water, which I guess isn't a hundred percent, but it's supposed to, you know, filter a lot of the lime scale out. So there we go. So that's in there, and I'm covered in it. Um, forget what that was, little window, I think. But yeah, and there's a little caddy for it. There we go. Tear down of the uh, Morphe Richards, and I'm going to be disposing of that properly. But um, yeah, I'll stick it in the recycling, the Wii recycling waste electrical and uh, move on to the next one but I thought it was quite interesting. Cheers for now.